So we want to go ahead and get started tonight with our process. Um, and a lot to cover. I'm going to do it pretty quickly because I really want to give you some time to uh, be able to speak with schools. Uh, so on behalf of the board, I want to welcome you. Uh, it's great to have all of you here with us this evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this school year obviously is almost over. We're getting really close to the end of the school year. And I'm super excited about it uh, in lots of ways. Uh, we listen to our our families, our students, uh, and community members, and our staff to diligently create opportunities for our students to get a, a great education. Not good, but great, a great education. Tonight I'll be sharing an update on the restructuring process as we prepare for the exciting launch of the 1920 school year. Uh, we've also planned time this evening to make connections at the new school community. Uh, you will see each of our schools has tables around the perimeter within the hub, um, and uh, before we end this evening, we're going to make sure you have an opportunity to be able to visit those tables and ask questions and get answers to more uh, questions that you might have. Uh, our after, uh, aftercare partners are here as well, um, and uh, some of our other departments that uh, are here, transportation for example, so you have plenty of time as well if you have some transportation questions or questions around um, uh, schools and locations. Before we get started, though, I'd like to introduce our board. Uh, we have some of our board members here and others may be joining us later on. They work tirelessly, uh, have led this process. Uh, I always refer to myself as hired help, because that's what I am. Uh, and, and so I want to recognize our board for the bold steps they have taken uh, to uh, get us to this place. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize our board president, Mrs. Leslie Hotshead. Please give her a round. We have our assistant secretary uh, here as well, Dr. Sheila Powell Walker. I mean, others may be joining us with work duties and so forth, but uh, we have our vice president, Ms. Jessica Ponder, our secretary, Dr. Thurman, also directors, uh, Mr. Rob Chabot, uh, Mr. Scott Ebert, and Dr. Courtney Graves. Give them a round of applause as well. Serving on the board requires much more than attending monthly meetings and often requires more difficult decisions that happen to be made uh, in order to take our district in the direction that we're going in. And, uh, you know, I would ask the legislators to give them a 50% a, a increase, but I don't know if they'd, they'd approve that. That's an inside joke. Uh, if also, I want to take a chance to recognize any other elected officials, any clergy or other community leaders who serve on uh, the uh, advisory councils that I hold, uh, if any of our elected officials, clergy, and advisory council members are here, please stand at this time. I want to recognize you as well. Uh, let's give them a round. Absolutely. Let's give them a round. Absolutely. Uh, all the work we are doing with restructuring is geared towards creating the better outcomes for our children. And we're continuing to make progress on the restructuring process. Uh, we've organized our work into 25 areas that you'll see on the screen. I'll touch on most of these areas this evening, and you will find information related to these work areas on our timeline. For the most part, we have held to anticipated dates that we published on our timeline. However, we had to make a few adjustments. It is more important, we believe, to get things right than to cut corners to meet deadlines, uh, but we're well on our way uh, to our goals uh, that all of our team members have worked so diligently towards and making sure everything's in place uh, before the 1920s and so we are kind of ahead of the game in, in, for the most part. So I want to dive right in and uh, specifically begin addressing our parents. Uh, as a parent myself, uh, we need your extreme help parents. Um, we need, and your child in particular, needs your support. Parent involvement is essential as we make these shifts this year. Parents, we need, we're asking you to increase your involvement in your child's education. Uh, we need you partnering with your child's school to help your child succeed. Nothing is more powerful than a parent, an involved parent, and that doesn't necessarily mean you're at the school all the time, but an involved parent in your child's education. Together we can build stronger children, stronger schools, and a stronger North County. If your child is in the pre-K to second grade bookend, you need to make sure that they are reading and doing math well by the time they leave, listen to this, first grade. And we're putting structures in place, uh, and we'll go deeper around that, but we need our students prepared by the time they leave first grade 
so that when children are in third grade, which is when state testing begins, that they're already set up for success. And that was a huge part of that restructuring process for our pre-K-2 schools. Uh, specifically, we believe that, uh, and in my opinion, a strong uh, foundation in reading and in math, and I love math, uh, but specifically in math, the United States, listen to this, sets algebra one, sets the United States sets algebra one as the bar. But countries like Japan and China on international test uh, performance, their measure is calculus. And we wonder why so many engineers and mathematicians come from places like China and Japan. It's not that kids in China and Japan are smarter than the kids in the US. We just set the bar lower, and we have to raise that bar. Underneath the goal is developing young minds that are analytic, thinkers, and problem solvers. We have traditionally had lower expectations, especially for students like me who grew up in poverty. But let me tell you that that ends now. We have to stop the cycle for all kids, whatever your color is or your zip code, we have to stop the low expectations and lift those. Take notice of what I said though. I didn't say anything about college. What I said was we have to lift the expectations and what we believe our children can do. Whatever your belief is about college, we have to make sure our students have the skills to do whatever they choose once they graduate from high school. It's not my decision to tell them what to do. It's my duty to make sure they're prepared for whatever it is they choose to do. I would love to have a general contractor build my house, develop my city, who made a perfect score on the AP calculus test. We expect that of our doctors and our lawyers, so we have to do the same for all of our students, have high expectations. And when I say all, I mean all. And we have to expect that all kids can perform at the highest level. We can't decide and choose who's gonna do that. We've gotta believe and expect that all of them do, no excuses. So let me turn to our, our school communities. Our human resources and technology service department have tackled a major component of the restructuring, restructuring process during the late winter and early spring, as many of our teachers made their selections for the teaching placements that they'll be in for this coming school year. As I have shared many times through this process, I know that change is hard. I know that many of you have formed tight bonds and close professional and personal relationships uh, in your current settings. I believe that the process for selecting teacher assignments has been fair and as fair as it could be. Everybody may not have agreed with everything that was done, but I believe in my heart that we've been as fair as we possibly could. On April 8th, our new school staffs came together for the first time in their new buildings. Since that time, schools have begun welcoming students and parents to the buildings. And I'm excited to see our new school communities forming. If your school has not yet had a student or parent event, then you should expect that to come really, really soon. We want students to be ready for August, and if you haven't had a meeting at your school, then you should be having that meeting coming soon. Ask that question tonight when you're at your school table. So quickly, as we think about shifts of who supervises the schools, we're gonna be recognizing some people in this next phase. Uh, the area south of 270 will be declared as area one. Uh, supervising the pre-K through second grade school, uh, the third through fifth grade schools, and the sixth grade schools, which is John, the sixth grade center, which is Johnson Wabash, will be Dr. Deanna Kitson. Dr. Kitson, she's around. There she is, so there she is there. So if, if, if that includes your child, then Dr. Kitson's here tonight, and she'll be able to answer questions along with the principals of those schools. Areas north of 270, this is all option two, the areas north of 270 will be area two. Uh, supervising the pre-K-2 through second grade schools, the third through fifth grade schools, and the sixth grade center, which is Wedgwood, will be Dr. Lisa Hazel. Dr. Hazel, there she is. <laughs> supervising our middle schools, uh, our, which are our seventh and eighth grade schools, um, that is Cross Keys and Ferguson Middle School, as well as our STEAM Academy, uh, our STEAM uh, High School Academy at Nicholas South Berkeley, will be Dr. Adrian Bland. Dr. Bland. <laughs> also supervising our Innovation School and our Restoration Center uh, will be uh, Dr. Benita Jamison. Dr. Jamison, please stand. 
I also want to recognize two of our board members. I want you, I want you all to come on up front. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Courtney Graves is here with us and Dr. Uh, Paula Thurman. All of the ladies that I introduced a moment ago who were supervising the schools, all of these ladies have been successful principals who care deeply about the, the instructional core that we often talk about, which includes high quality teaching, rich standards aligned content, and students learning with evidence of their improved academic ability. I realize that different buildings have different cultures and perceptions of those cultures. This is the opportunity to press reset on our school culture. Don't assume the rumors that you've heard in the past are true. Give an opportunity to learn the new cultures that are being created at your school. This is a chance for our schools to recreate that culture. We want to build and rebuild relationships. We want to restore your trust in the work that we're doing for our children. We want parents to feel welcome in our schools. I'll say it often, without the students, we wouldn't have jobs. Students and parents are our customers, and we want to make sure that we're educating children to the best of our abilities. We need your help to make North County strong. As our schools restructure, I want parents to know that we are committing to open communication between schools and home. I want our school level staff to know that we're committing to improving communication between administration and schools. Everyone who works at central office, including me, does so uh, at the service of our schools and particularly our classrooms. The question I always ask and I ask others is, how does my role that the board has hired me, how does our role at the central level impact the work in the classroom? We began our work around the instructional core in the classroom. What's going on between teachers, students, and content. That's where you're gonna get the biggest gain and improving school districts is by changing and supporting what's going on in classrooms. At this time, I'd like to introduce our principals for the 1920 school year. I'm gonna call their name, and uh, if they would stand, I'd like to recognize them. They'll also be at their tables uh, as we begin uh, the uh, session where we have our, our communication with our tables. Uh, our pre-K to second grade schools will be known uh, referred to as our primary schools, and here are the following principals of those schools. Um, Dr. Loyette uh, will be principal at Bermuda. She's not here with us this evening, but Ms. Pam Burroughs is here. Uh, Dr. Loyette broke her foot, so please, uh, we excuse her, she has to recover. Uh, but Dr. Loyette will be principal at, Loy uh, at Bermuda, and so uh, Ms. Burroughs, if you're here, please stand, there she is there. So uh, give her a round. They've been working closely together, creating community in the Bermuda School District or area, and I'm excited about the work they'll do uh, at Bermuda next year. Uh, at Central uh, will be Dr. Sheldon McAfee. Dr. McAfee, he's already doing his parade wave there. Commons Lane, Ms. Carla Leggett. This she is. Uh, at Duchesne, Dr. Sheila Ward. Dr. Ward, this she is there. Um, at Holman, uh, Dr. Heather Carroll. Dr. Carroll is over here as well. At Parker Road, Dr. Melinda Ice. Dr. Ice, is she is there. And at Walnut Grove, Suzette Sims. Ms. Sims, she's there. Yep, that's she is right there. Awesome. Our third through fifth grade schools will be known or referred to as our intermediate schools. And, and let me say again, so states, across this country began assessing students in third grade. And so those pre-K-2 schools have been structured so that students can develop as children and get that foundation for the skills they need. So by the time they get to third grade, when states actually begin doing that formal testing, our kids have had an opportunity to get early learning that I didn't get uh, during my day. So I'm so excited about that work and excited about our third through fifth grade schools as well. At Berkeley Elementary, uh, will be our principal of the year, Ms. Uh, Stacy Watlington. Ms. Watlington, she is right there. At Combs will be Dr. Leslie Thomas Washington. Dr. Washington. At Griffith will be Dr. Aisha Grace. Dr. Grace is here. At Hall's Ferry Elementary School, Dr. Exley Warren. Dr. Warren. 
Reese Hamilton will be Dr. Amanda I. Dr. I. She's right here. Awesome. And then Robin Blue will be Mr. Sean Joyce. Joyce is here as well. I'm excited about these opportunities, and particularly our sixth grade schools uh, and the uh, uh, what they'll bring for our students for next year. Uh, having sixth grade centers on our middle school campuses promises to uh, ease the transition. Students often have uh, problems in transitioning uh, from elementary to middle school, and this will help us with that transition to secondary schools to increase uh, choice for our students. We know across the nation that sixth grade is a time when students struggle. Sixth grade and ninth grade. Sixth grade is generally the beginning of middle school. Sometimes even students who have performed well in elementary school struggle with that shift in middle school. And we believe strongly that this model that we put in place will mitigate another barrier to success for our students. Uh, with our sixth grade campuses in proximity to our seventh and eighth grade uh, school, right on the same, literally, the same yard, uh, we're excited about setting this context, context for success. Uh, our sixth grade principals will be at Johnson Wabash, uh, Ms. Tangy Francois, right here. And also at Wedgwood uh, will be Dr. Katie Chambers, Dr. Chambers, she's here as well. Our seventh and eighth grade middle school building principals will be uh, Mr. Leo Gonal at Ferguson Middle School and Mr. Eric Harris at Cross Keys Middle School. Here. Our sixth through eighth grade STEAM Academy principal uh, is Dr. Chris Reese. Dr. Reese is met here as well. Our ninth through twelfth grade high school principals will be the following. Um, with AP Capstone being one of the uh, seminar, seminal programs at McClure High School, right here where we stand, Mr. Cedric Gerald. Mr. Gerald is here. Home of our new International Baccalaureate uh, degree program, uh, Mr. Frank Williams. Mr. Williams is here. Our STEAM Academy at McClure Berkeley High School, which will also have AP Capstone, is Dr. Jane Crawford. Dr. Crawford. As well. And last but not at all least, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, is our innovation school at Coo Valley. I'm really excited about that. And our new founding principal is Ms. Sheila Carr. We've dedicated the majority of this evening for you to have time to visit your school principals and their tables, as well as our departments and partners. Uh, please be sure that you stop by these tables and introduce yourselves uh, to all of our partners and our principals and get any questions that you might have. Let me jump quickly to some of the transition work that we're doing with one of uh, some of these areas. Moving information has been shared with all district teachers. That's been some uh, a concern for teachers about now that they know where they are, then they're thinking about how do I move and get ready to be in my new space as the school year begins next year. So I want to address that because I've gotten that question quite a bit and I want to make sure that we treat it as best we can. Uh, so moving information has been distributed already to all teachers. That information is available on the restructuring page on our website, as well as a list of the frequently asked questions that we've uh, pulled together. Uh, that's also a link uh, with additional questions that you might not have thought about. Facilities has ordered 30,000 boxes and tape. We hope that this is enough. However, we, if we need more, we'll get more. Uh, please contact facilities if you need additional boxes. So if you're a teacher in here and you haven't got those, please make sure that you get uh, all the boxes you need to do the packing up. Uh, facilities have begun pre uh, preparations for the move to our new uh, center on Dunn Road. Uh, so facilities will be moving to where we are. We have the STEAM school on the first floor. We have administration on the second and third floor. And the facilities department uh, will be moving over as well. And we have a huge space in the back, uh, well over 30,000 square feet. So we'll have three different operations in one space. So that also gives us, uh, us an opportunity to be able to maximize uh, uh, on our resources so that we can concentrate our resources. Our operations team has been working hard this month to make our transitions to our uh, new attendance boundaries as smooth as possible. Uh, parents, in January, you should have received a link to find your child's school for the 1920 school year. We have an online help center to assist you if you encounter any difficulty. Our transportation department is here this evening. Uh, Mr. Kevin Perung is our new director of transportation. Please stand, Mr. Perung. He's here. He's with us this evening. Uh, 
Um, and we also have Chromebooks available in here this evening. So if you haven't gotten that information, you can go by one of those Chromebooks and we'll be happy to, to support you in that. Uh, maps that indicate the attendance boundaries for each school, including the area where students will walk to school or areas uh, where they'll get on the buses, and all the restructuring map information is there. Uh, you can go to our website at www.thirdfloor.org forward slash strong, S-T-R-O-N-G. Um, our staff here at McClure, as well as our district staff, have begun working hard to welcome our students who will be coming to McClure for the first time in August. This is also true for students who will be attending our uh, Ferguson Middle School uh, next year as well. So McClure our Berkeley students will be coming over here, Berkeley Elementary students will be going to Ferguson Middle School, and we have been working diligently. In fact, they've had hiking trips and have done some really cool things to begin incorporating our, our communities, and that's really important. Now, we know this is a difficult transition, but I want to assure you that we support you and we want you to have a great future and a great experience as students come to their new school. I know that Mr. Gerald, as well as Mr. Ganahl, have been discussing some great summer plans as well. Um, and you'll be hearing more about those soon. So if you get an opportunity this evening, you can stop by their tables. The application window for the 6-8 STEAM Academy has closed and students who will be attending 6 through 8 STEAM Academy for next school year have already been notified. So we already have that in place. Um, STEAM High School at the Poolside Berkeley will open in August with 9th grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade only. And then we'll add 12th grade the next year. 12th, 11th grade will go to 12th grade and we'll bring in a new, a new 9th grade class. Uh, Dr. Croft has been working through the admissions process and getting ready for our 1920 school year. Um, I'm also excited about the Innovation School. I mentioned that a little bit ago, uh, and Ms. Carr is our founding principal there. Um, as I stated in my State of the District address back in February, I want to obliterate, get rid of totally, the whole notion of alternative education. This is going to open up so many opportunities for our students who need another option to get deeply engaged in their education uh, than in the current model that we have. Our innovation school is based on the big picture learning model developed at the Met School in Providence, Rhode Island. The Met in Providence is the flagship school for big picture learning. We'll be replicating that model at our innovation school at Cool Valley. Um, I want to say that as I think about the model they uh, built at the Met School, uh, this model is based on an LTI or students learning through interests, and some say, and learning through internships. I like to think of it, uh, especially with our innovation school, that we have students who are learning through interests, internships, and innovation. So LTI, learning through interests, internships, and innovation. Students spend a portion of their week at an internship, beginning in ninth grade. They spend a portion of their week at their internships learning content through the actual work that they're interested in. Uh, we, so this whole model is a little different because teachers will be called advisors and they'll have 15 students that they get in ninth grade and that teacher or that advisor will carry the students all the way through their 12th grade year. Uh, many of these students will graduate with certificates so that they can go straight to work when they graduate from high school as well as students who decide they want to go to uh, any insti a a prestig prestigious institution that they so choose. Uh, when we were at the next school and we visited that last year in Providence, we have students who immediately leave uh, the, the next school, which is our innovation school, and go and get jobs because they, they want to start their own business. And we have students going to Brown University and other prestigious colleges. So the options are varied and many for our students to have those opportunities. So I'm really excited for next year uh, in the work that Dr. Jamison and Ms. Pars is doing to get ready for our students in August. So many of you have asked this question, what will become of VOTE, since VOTE is one of those schools that is being closed for next year. So I want to address that. I'm pleased to share that the board has approved um, that the historic VOTE will house our student services and early education offices. Uh, we have a, a, a tremendous amount of needs uh, in our schools and we've had folks you know, in different places trying to find adequate space for them to be able to have offices and to do some of this other work. And so both will house our student services, which encompasses quite a bit, as well as our early ed offices. 
This is, includes parents as teachers. Uh, the central location should also be easier for new families coming into our district uh, who need to get that support and some wraparound services and getting our students ready for school as well as our early education teams. With our first priority on moving teachers' materials to the new schools, new student registration <clears throat> for the 1920 school year will remain at our office right now uh, in the old Waterford building so that we can get teachers prepared. Uh, so teachers, if you're here and you still have questions, so the memo that we sent out a couple of weeks ago here that specifically talks about the move process, um, especially as we get ready for the beginning of this school year, while our uh, student services officers will be moving to vote, we're going to remain where we are until we get school started. That way, new parents coming in can still do registration and enrollment and all those pieces at our Waterford office. And once we get school started and our students are ready and going, our teachers are supported, then we'll make that shift after school begins so that that interrupt we're already working on. Uh, our work in our high schools and the STEAM school and the innovation school addresses one end of our student experience. The other bookend is early education. Ferguson, Florida has long been a champion in early education. We have a legacy going back decades. The data shows that students who go through our early ed programs consistently outperform those students who do not. The governor has stated that he wants to increase the number of students across the state who experience high quality early education. Currently, the state provides a relatively a small amount of funding for that. Uh, we're finding ways to support this locally uh, with limited financial resources, but we need more support from our state to fully uh, serve all of our students in our community. I am excited to share that the response from our families wanting full day early ed for their children has been greater than what we anticipated. I had a number of questions from folks who, because we still have full day and we have half day as well. And I had some questions coming from parents about, you know, are we getting rid of half day and we're not. Now, what I can tell you is that we have more parents who ask for full day, um, and so we're responding to the needs of uh, the, the, the parents in our community. Uh, we're working really hard to accommodate the request as best we can. Uh, while the district does not offer, let me make sure I say this slowly because I, I don't want you to, I want anybody to lose this. While the district does not offer before and after school care for our students, we have made arrangements with our partners who offer this uh, and being able to use our spaces so that families can have access to before and after school care. But let me say that differently. So while we don't sponsor the before and after school care, we have partners that do that. They are in control of that. We give space to them and we partner with them so that we can have before and after school care in our schools. Uh, we have a partnership with us this evening, and so please, I've gotten questions from parents about you know, before school care, after school care. Uh, if you have those questions, I want you to get those uh, questions answered tonight. Please stop by the table and talk with our partners so that you can get those questions answered. Uh, our partners are planning to join us uh, as they're here and uh, at other meetings as well, but you can also go on our website by clicking on the parent slash student link on our website. You can, you can get more information there as well. Start and stop times and calendar shift. As I shared at the State of the District, after much research, we presented several options for later start times to increase opportunities for student success, especially at our high schools. Uh, we listened to the feedback from parents and the board approved the following start and end times for our 1920 school year. Middle schools will start at 725 and end at 230. High schools will start at 805 and end at 310. Um, our three five schools will have breakfast at 835 and start at 850 and end at 340. Our pre-K two schools We'll have breakfast at 9.05, start at 9.20, and end at 4.10. Many of you have heard the legislation that passed in Jeff City uh, just uh, recently, um, beginning the 2021 school year. If you haven't heard, I'm gonna tell you what it says. Um, this legislation that passed in Jeff City just last week, I believe it was, um, says this essentially that in the 2021 school year, 
we will be required to start school no earlier than 14 days before Labor Day. Now, you know, we've traditionally started school pretty early, but this new legislation starting in the 2021 school year says that we can't start school uh, more than 14 days earlier than Labor Day. This year, we're beginning a school on August 15th. So please help us with communicating that date out that we will be starting August 15th. That was largely put in place so that we can have time to be able to get ready for our 1920 school year with all the restructuring. It's so important that you help me spread the word that Fur 4 will start school in August on August 15th. That's the first day of school. I say that because we have students sometimes coming in when Hazelwood starts or when Riverview Garden starts. They feel like we can start then. We need students here on the first day. Uh, I need everybody in the community helping me with this because let me tell you that uh, attendance is a huge part of our funding. Uh, we need students here every day so that we can be accounted for that because that funding helps support all of our other structures, including salaries in our district. So we need our students here. All the other stuff really goes out the window if kids aren't here. We need our students here. Uh, we need them ready to learn and we're gonna do everything we can to make sure they're set up, uh, set up for success. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, block scheduling. Uh, all of our secondary schools will have block scheduling for the 1920 school year. I'm gonna touch on this briefly. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of block scheduling, having taught in it and been a principal in it as well. Uh, block scheduling provides students with more time and content. Uh, if they have more time with content, then students will, we hope, experience and learn more and in turn perform better on any assessment. Now, we don't teach to the test. What we teach to are, are the standards. I want students mastering content. A test will take care of itself. But if you don't get that content down early on, then you're going to struggle all the way through school. I, I, I'm, I'm a witness. Um, also, we believe that block scheduling affords students the opportunity to take four additional credits by the time they graduate. So they give them more opportunities to have more electives and to be better prepared for what they choose once they graduate. Imagine how much better prepared for success in college and life our students will be with this additional opportunity. We're also continuing our strategic plan around the core um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this because this is really important. Many of our schools have begun using the CI3T model to address student needs. Um, and, and let me say it this way, uh, in a word, discipline. Uh, because that's something that constantly comes up. And, you know, something that I'm super passionate about, having been a, a principal for years, how important it is to have a good decorum in your school so that students can learn and teachers can teach. Or really the other way around, teachers can teach so that students can learn. Um, as our school staffs change, we need to press reset on some of these valuable tools. Uh, CI3T stands for a Comprehensive Integrated Three-Tier Support Model uh, that addresses social, emotional, and I often hear about that, which is really important, behavioral, as well as academic. It pulls it all together. Uh, we have an assessment they would do that gives us some screener data so that we can know more specifically how to support students. A student may receive more intensive academic support without increased behavioral support or vice versa. It really depends on what the student needs and what kinds of supports that we put in place so our teachers have that. The way to ensure that we work, uh, that the work we're doing lasts beyond any of us um, is through policy. Students have to be ready for the next grade level at the end of each year. Soon we will be presenting some policy changes regarding our promotions and retention. I stated publicly that one of the goals of our pre-K-2 primary schools is to prepare students socially, emotionally, and behaviorally, as well as provide them with solid, a solid foundation in reading and math. Now, let me tell you about the policy process, because it's really important to have input during those processes. You always have a first reading that says to the community, here's a policy we're presenting to the board that we want to shift, that we want to make some changes in. And after that first reading, then there's an opportunity for a public to have, an in, uh, to have input. So we want the public to have input in the policy change, and then at the second reading, it could happen at the next board meeting or in a subsequent meeting, we'll come back and say, here uh, it was the first uh, reading, here are some changes that we uh, suggested, uh, here's some input we've gotten uh, from people in the community, and here's the final draft. Uh, we're gonna have to 
specifically look at uh, some of our promotion and retention. Now, Senate Bill 319, which was passed long before I got here, um, states specifically that students have to be reading on grade level by the end of fourth grade. And they, they are to be promoted on if they're not. This has been law for a while. Uh, so let me say that we're going to make sure that our students are set up for success so that that's why the pre-K-2 piece is important so that when students get in uh, and, and are at three years old and four years old, they're getting that foundation to grow as children so that by the time they get to third grade, they're already ready for that success. But we're going to have to hold students accountable so that they don't leave fourth, third grade or fourth grade unprepared. Uh, and so there's a lot of work there, but I wanted to bring that out this evening. Um, also, many of you have had the opportunity to join us back in February at the State of the District. Uh, even if you weren't able to attend, hopefully you've heard some of the news around the performance from Desi and our district and so forth. Uh, we're excited about the direction we're going in. We've made some gains, but we have so much more to do. Increasing attendance is going to be really important. Uh, improving our reading and math scores, especially at the highest levels. Right? Especially for students performing in proficient and advanced. That says that students are ready for college level work. That means they have to go, it means they can do the work. And that's going to be really important. Our past four years, the district has covered around 70. Uh, we moved to 92.1 last year. We're excited about that. That's a huge increase. Um, we celebrated that, but we don't rest on those laws. But we got to keep that work going. We got to make sure that our students keep reading all the time, doing math well. Uh, there's something called rigor, and let me tell you what that means. Rigor specifically means uh, procedural knowledge. Uh, being a math teacher, you got to know the rules and the procedures in order to solve math problems. Uh, then there's something called conceptual understanding, deeply understanding what the quadratic equation is or what the quadratic formula is and how to apply and find a solution. And then the last part of that is application. How do I apply this knowledge that I've gained so that I become better at what I'm doing? We want our students to have those kinds of skills so they are set up for success. Um, let me say that our graduation rate has improved. We're excited about that. We're at 87.5%. Uh, we feel strong that we'll get to 90, but I need 100% of our students graduating. I need them graduating in four years. We want them ready for success. All the stuff we're doing, it, 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 listen folks, this is, not, this is not just changes to be making changes. Every decision that the board has made, that we've brought, uh, and doing all this work with community, it is calculated so that students are better by the time they graduate from high school. Being first generation college, I know the value of a good quality education. I'm first generation. My mom and grandma didn't go to college, but they knew how important education was. And what I want is for every one of our children, my wife and I want this for our son, we want every one of our children ready for success so when they graduate, they have the skills. I often hear people talk about North County and the way things used to be. Let me tell you, without a good quality school district, you can hang up economic development. Let me say it differently. The best economic developer is a quality public school district. I didn't say private. I said public. A quality public school district. And when people move to communities, one of the first questions they ask is what? How are your schools? And if the schools are bad, do you think somebody's going to buy a house in that community? So you can say what you want. You gotta make those schools better so they improve property value and improve economic development by bringing businesses in so people will want to be a part of this community. A couple of other quick things and I'll be done. When it comes to standards, I mentioned that a minute ago. I'm gonna slow down here because this is something that really excites me. When it comes to content and standards, our focus is on better outcomes for kids. Not just passing a test, making an A on the test. I want kids that get the knowledge, understand it deeply, and they can use it for life, right? So here's what we're gonna be after. You ever heard of something called standards-based grading? We want students to master standards. When you master standards, listen, I don't care what test you take. We had a couple of our students to come over today. Both of them have graduated, Josh, and Antonio. Antonio graduated from Southside Berkeley last year. Josh graduated uh, from McClure North two years ago. Uh, Antonio is a, 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 a rising sophomore at Truman State, um, and Josh is a rising junior uh, at Prairie View a and at a historically black college university in Texas. Um, Josh uh, wants to uh, be a, a sports enthusiast. Uh, he's majoring in business and sports science, and I'm sorry, that's Tony. And, and, and Josh is majoring in pre-med. 
he's getting ready, he's preparing to take the MCAT, the Medical College Admissions Test. We have some amazing students, and these students have done well academically so that they can move on. Well, guess what? What parent doesn't want that for their child? We want it for every student. Whether they choose it or not, we have, they have the skills. Every child deserves at least one year's growth every year. Teachers, you may have children who come below grade level, but every child deserves at least to grow one year. Now, we have kids who come two and three years behind, and so we've got to get them on grade level. I'm excited about standards-based grading, uh, and I want parents to really deeply understand what it means to, uh, to, to know what a standard is and whether or not your child has mastered that standard. It's more than getting a book and looking at a problem and doing a problem. It's do they have the skills to meet the standard that's in front of them? Also, with uh, some of the curriculum enhancement pieces, here are a couple of sort of quick bites. Uh, we're going to continue going deeper in our elementary and second schools with our ELA curriculum. Uh, we have had a strong focus on reading and writing, and we're going to continue to go deep there. We want our students to be strong in those skills. We're going to increase our offerings in our high schools, especially high school math, with the addition of statistics, college algebra, and calculus BC. We already have calculus AB, calculus BC. Uh, both um, offered um, our college algebra and calculus BC will be offered uh, for college credit. Uh, pending board approval, we have been going deep around Washington University's curriculum uh, in science, MASA, which is grades kindergarten through eighth grade, allowing our students to learn deeply the science standards, because science is also a test area for the state, and most states it is. Uh, adoption of a new quality biology textbook for our high school students, so that they have what they need to learn and master the standards well. Uh, we'll also be preparing our teachers who will um, uh, you know, work hard on uh, getting more teachers prepared to teach advanced placement, which is AP uh, science offerings, including AP biology and AP chemistry. We'll be expanding Project Lead the Way with biomedical science, computer science. Uh, we'll also add human body systems and computer science principles for our high schools. And also pending board approval, a more robust assessment system that will empower our teachers and our district leaders to measure grade level standard performance throughout the school year. We want to know how well students are, are mastering the standards. And then through 1920 school year, uh, we have, have a revision of our K-5 math uh, curriculum, our fine arts and performance, our K-12 social studies, as well as our health and PE uh, curriculums as well. Uh, let me just quickly say that when you talk about STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, so one of the most important things I believe that students can have is a strong math foundation. And that often comes in elementary school. And I've said this time and again, and I'll keep saying it, that we have to have uh, our elementary math curriculum as solid as it can be, with teachers having the support they need. So when students leave elementary school, let me tell you, having been a math teacher, the bottleneck course is sixth grade math. Let me tell you why. Because what happens in sixth grade is students take pre-algebra, algebra one, and then geometry for students who are on the advanced track. And so if there are those advanced classes starting in sixth grade, they're also not only in the math advanced classes, but also in the ELA and the other advanced classes. So if a student isn't on that track, then they may not get to calculus by the time they get to the end of high school. Now remember I said earlier, the standard in the United States is algebra one and those higher performing countries is calculus. So you may ask, every child may not want to do calculus or may not go to college. We want students with the skills they need. And so it starts before they get to high school. It starts when they're in elementary school math so that by the time they get to sixth grade, they're ready. I also want to recognize our AVID program, uh, Mr. Charlie Moore. Mr. Moore is here, please stand. Uh, Mr. Moore is our AVID coordinator. Uh, he has been working diligently right here at, uh, at McClure High School uh, with our ninth grade academies. Uh, we'll be spreading AVID throughout all of our secondary schools. Every student in sixth grade all the way through 12th grade will uh, access AVID. Let me tell you that if your child struggles with studying, struggles with uh, taking good notes, uh, really understanding how to do school well, that's what AVID does. So if you have uh, and want some answers to more questions, Mr. Moore is here this evening to be able to uh, support those questions. 
uh, at Aspen High School and also at McClure High School. We, uh, I said before, we'll have advanced placement uh, capstone. Uh, that's for 10th through 12th grade students. And so we're excited. It's, re it's, it's really in line with our IB program that will be uh, at North High School. So we're excited to have those uh, there. And we want students taking AP exams. Um, I want students doing well on those exams. In fact, I want students making perfect scores. And the reason I want that is because I want them to have mastered the content. Because if you have the content, the scores take care of themselves. Uh, I mentioned McCool, we just got approved. We're excited. This has been a two-year process. Um, I want to recognize Dr. Bland, um, also Dr. Forbes. Uh, they work diligently with the staff at McClure High School. Uh, so Dr. Forbes, please stand. Dr. Bland, please stand. Um, and, and I also want to recognize uh, any of our administrators at McClure North, because you all work, you know, any teachers, anybody from McClure North, just stand for a moment if you're here from McClure North. Just stand up. Yeah. I'm telling you, it, it has taken everybody's work it's, a, it's an arduous process to get through IB, um, to get through their, uh, you have to go through the international office, and we, for the last year and a half, two years, have been working diligently on that, and when we learned, when I read that email, and it, say, it said that we had been approved, I was like, hallelujah, because that's huge. Um, also, as I close here, um, a couple more things. School safety has been a hot topic across this nation, not just in Perth, floor, but across this country. We've seen school shootings and things that are happening, and none of us won't let it our doorsteps. Uh, and let me tell you that we, the board in particular, has uh, shifted some things. Uh, we continue to make revisions on our student expectation code, and we'll be, uh, we've already brought that for a first reading. We'll come back with a final policy once we've done some more of that input work. My hope is that our students never encounter any consequences for violating our code. However, we need to have things in order when school opens. Uh, we also want to be confident that students and teachers understand deeply what this means. Our board has approved the safety enhancement in the form of additional school resource officers, uh, security officers, uh, uh, learning and curriculum through our, our Second Steps programs and different things that will be in our schools as well as our Restoration Center and Reentry Center. A lot of things to give support to our students so they're set up for success. I'm grateful for the partnerships that our district has with our local municipalities and law enforcement. Uh, I want to just take an opportunity. So we have nine municipalities in our district. Uh, we work with Berkeley, Coos Valley, Normandy, Ferguson, Delwood. Uh, I want to just highlight quickly um, uh, Officers Barry and Lieutenant Fath. They're here with us. Just please stand. Both of them from the floor uh, police department. Give them a round of applause. We might stand for just a moment. I personally have met with uh, Mayor uh, Lowry, uh, at least, I've had at least three meetings with him in the last month or so, uh, along with the board and other uh, team members. Um, and the reason I asked Clarkson to be here is because probably 90% of our SROs that we have in our schools that year will come through the Florida Police Department. But here's the piece I want to say, and, and the mayor can be here, but he sent the well-able people to be here with us, because I want to highlight the importance of the relationship that we have with our municipalities. Um, it's specifically with Florissa because Florissa is the biggest, the last information I read, the biggest municipality in the St. Louis region, one, but two, that our mayor, uh, Chief Fagan, our new chief, as well as Lieutenant Fast and Officer Barry, everybody in the department is in lock, stock, and barrel with us when it comes to creating safe schools in our, in our district. Um, and it's really important for the community to see the relationship that a district has with our municipalities, Florissa, Ferguson, and all of our municipalities. And I'm really excited about our relationship as we move forward. We've had a great one, but it's going to be even better as we move forward, uh, having additional SROs and security in our schools, by having them as thought partners at the table. So let's give them another round of applause. Um, I've had a couple of questions about uniforms, um, and we've been pushing really hard on a lot of things. Okay, So those who are proponents may or may not uh, necessarily be as excited as I am as we move forward with all of this uniform work. Let me say that we won't be taking a recommendation to the board uh, for 1920. We need some time to get more public input. We did a survey. What we do know is that we need more input from our community. And so we don't want to push anything down anybody's throat. <clears throat> we want to make sure that our community has more time for input. Um, at present, we have formal uh, uniforms at our STEAM academies at uh, the 6 8 middle school as well as uh, at the uh, high school for next year. Over the past several months, we've had conversations with students, 
I personally met with students, personally met with uh, teachers, personally met with parents uh, regarding uniforms in all of our schools. Uh, many have expressed an interest in casual uniforms uh, as opposed to formal uniforms. However, I want to be sure that we have more representative voices at the table. So over the course of the next year, 1920, we'll be engaging our schools. Uh, we want parents, we want you involved. Uh, a year from now, I don't know what the recommendation will be. It, it may not be to carry uniforms to, as a recommendation to the board, or it may be. But here's what I do want. I want you to know about it, and I want you to have an opportunity to engage in it if you so choose to do that. So that when a recommendation goes before the board, you have an opportunity to have your voices heard. We felt like that was fair uh, based on the information we've got from the surveys we've done so far. We had a good number of folks who responded, teachers and uh, 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 you know, parents and students as well. But we feel like it's important to get more voices at the table. So we'll keep that conversation with uniforms open uh, and please look forward to more uh, uh, times for engagement. So I'm getting ready to close. We've covered a lot of ground this evening and uh, we've just skimmed the surface. There's so much more I can talk about, but certainly time doesn't permit that. With the many changes that we have, we're uh, really anxious about the work, but we're also excited about the hope that it offers and the enthusiasm uh, as we believe it will grow. Keep asking questions of your children, of your teachers, of me, of other leaders around the district, because I personally take responsibility for the education of our children. And I've asked leaders and teachers, we have to take responsibility for our children. If we don't educate them, who will? If not now, then we. So that is our duty to make sure that we make that happen. Uh, we plan this evening to wrap up around 8 o'clock. And uh, I'm way over, Mr. Hampton. Uh, <laughs> uh, so please take time, as uh, I'm going to be dismissing you in just a few moments, to go to your tables, uh, talk with principals, talk with departments, talk with our partners, because I want to make sure that you have a chance to get some of these questions answered. Questions answered. Uh, when I came to the district, uh, one of the recommendations of the transition team was a need for rebranding. One aspect of that was creating a new logo. Throughout the years, the district logo became a stylized version of the original design, which includes a wagon representing the westward expansion uh, through this area and a wing representing our community's roots to aviation. Our new logo includes a stylized wheel encircling nine stars representing the nine municipalities that the district serves. The wing is now a rocket headed in a new direction for a launch pad based on reading and math. As we head in this new direction, uh, we're on, I believe, the precipice of greatness. Over the next couple of years, uh, or rather the past couple of years, I've had some folks come to me and express an urgency for the need for change. Uh, I've also had some folks come to me and say, slow down. Uh, so it's kind of hard to balance all that, but we've got to keep moving forward for the sake of our children. Our students deserve a high quality education now, and we're moving in that direction so they get that. I'm asking all of you, everyone in this room, and everyone who will watch the video later on to join me and, and lock arms with us so that we make sure we educate every child well. We should not ever let a child leave here again and not have the skills that they need to make sure they have the best future possible. Our mantra is one district united, and it's going to take all of us working together to make this happen. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, and I want you now to have an opportunity to go and visit your team. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.